today we have uh, sharing by uh, Tarapasana Paya. Tarapasana Paya, Namaste. Ji, Namaste Paya, Namaste Gopal Paya, Namaste Paya. Ji, Paya. So, uh, Tarapasana Paya needs no introduction, but still, as a uh, formality in this platform, I will put Paya's brief introduction from my side, and then Paya will place his sharing. So Tarapasana Bhaiya, as we all know, he is an associate professor in the Electronics and Communication Department of Siksha O Anisansan deemed to be University Bhuvaneshwar, Odisha. Bhaiya has started his journey of uh, universal human values from November 2020 in an online workshop. Then from then, Bhaiya is uh, volunteering in very many activities of uh, UHP. So he has been, uh, he attended the UHP2 workshop later in January 2022. In between, he attended in the first one part one also. And thereafter, Paya has been a very consistent volunteer in almost all the UHP uh, introductory, UHP2 and uh, student development program workshops in the online mode. He has been uh, volunteering all the uh, online activities. And then he started volunteering in the open activities also after COVID. He is uh, delivering content in the face-to-face -face mode, uh, coordinating so many meetings, and now coordinating the meeting of this uh, uh, conference also, international conference also, and very actively participating in the translation work and many other activities. And he is moderating in the uh, morning session, very uh, consistent participant in the morning sessions. So I uh, welcome Tara Paya for your sharing in the morning session. Paya, now over to you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the introduction. So once again, uh, namaste to everyone. So my name is uh, Tara Prasanna Das, as uh, Sunil Bhaiya said. So I uh, stayed at Baleshwar during my childhood. And now I am staying in Indonesia along with my family members. So uh, I have my father uh, who is around 79 years old. Then uh, my wife who is around 36 and uh, my daughter nine years old. So we are staying in a duplex where in the upstairs, my father-in-law and mother-in-law stays. And now I'm also having you know, my nephew with uh, me. So uh, we are having six member family staying, uh, residing at Bhubaneswar for quite a long time. Uh, and by profession, I am working as an associate professor at Siksha Amritsundar University around uh, uh, 13 or 14 years uh, by now. So uh, just to start with, like, uh, I was a uh, I was single son of my family uh, after three daughters. So I was brought and uh, born and brought up with a lot of affections in my family. So all the sisters uh, got married and uh, they were all set in their family. Now, uh, if I will talk about myself, uh, my father was a teacher and uh, mother was a housewife. Mother was a very strong believer of God. However, uh, father was uh, an atheist. So there is a contradiction from the very childhood that uh, what is right and what is wrong that you yourself need to find out. That means uh, you need yourself need to check, examine. And since childhood, I was uh, this kind of thing that uh, let me check what is the reality or what is the truth. Then only once I can verify, then only I will uh, go in that. So with this, uh, uh, I started and being a son of teacher, I was a bit keen towards the uh, learning process and good at academics. So uh, did good in my matriculation, then performed well in 12, then appeared and trans test, then got some... Uh, 
uh, degree college. He did good in the degree, so did uh, uh, something for job. So everywhere I was like, if if I will achieve this in the entrance exam, then my life is set. I used to say in these many workshops that yes, I was being told like if you complete this tenth in a very good mark, then things will be set. Then ten plus two things will be set. Then entrance thing will be set. Then you know UG. So if you are uh, doing good in the graduation course, then you know everything will be settled. So in that process, I went uh, to my highest education. Then like everybody else, I got uh, married. Then also got child. So everything like every human being goes through the process. But somewhere in this. Uh, bodily journey, I miss something is missing. Means everything is there, parents, family, uh, but I was not uh, very happy or very uh, satisfied with it. So, uh, and uh, basically after marriage, many things got complicated, like uh, man managing the relationship, uh, deal with uh, 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 my spouse, then so many things get uh, tied up but uh, i am really blessed and uh, my sincere gratitude to the coexistence that i was exposed to this content of universal human value and during the covid time so covid uh, can be the blessings to me that we are uh, at home and our university compels us to do that workshop though there is not keen desire to sit for five days, you know, who can spend these five days to sit uh, in a workshop. So I uh, initially there was some reluctant, but when I started attending, and uh, fortunately before me, my wife has attended, and I saw some uh, dramatical change in our behavior for first, you know, post uh, FDP uh, days. So uh, then I was uh, also exposed to this workshop. So uh, since that day of workshop, then uh, further UHB refresher one, refresher two, so many things came slowly sharing the content. So every time uh, this content, as much I understand, that much means I uh, became at ease. And particularly when I started this morning session in the fourth bitch, I don't know, October uh, 2020, uh, 2021, uh, since uh, October 2021, a fourth batch, uh, till this batch, every day, to the best of my ability, I try to attend and listen. And uh, despite of doing these steps again and again, many steps left, uh, like uh, I have to do it again. So with this, let us uh, start the uh, steps of exercise one and two. So uh, the question was, yes like uh, when I started the morning session for the first time, what will be the discussion that I will be happy in continuity? So this proposal uh, we asked in the workshop that uh, how can someone be happy in continuity? So though, yes, I want to be happy all the time, but how these will be people are saying it, it is possible. So when I did this, exercise for the very first time, the first step, like uh, be aware of our imagination. So even though like I was sometime observing my imagination earlier, but uh, when I did this exercise for the first time, now at that moment, it was like a meditation that uh, by closing eyes, I was trying to observe the imagination and uh, in the imagination, slowly things were coming, and sometimes I was flowing in the imagination, and uh, sometimes I was reacting. So, oh, this will happen, and like, why this happened? So, I was flowing. Like, the morning session is going on, and something is uh, being discussed, but I was in my imagination. So, I I uh, flew, I, I flew sometimes. So, like that, it was happening. But over the time when the batches increased like uh, fifth batch, sixth batch, the same exercise. So really, I was able to be consistent on the imagination part. And 
Uh, moreover, when we talk about this desire thought and expectations, so slowly the, the meaning of desire, the meaning of thought, expectations are not very clear. So in the workshop, like introductory, which we one or uh, refresher one or refresher two, these terms are coming and looks, these terms are very uh, simple terms, but until unless we are not uh, realizing in our living, that was not clear. So uh, slowly over the batches, let uh, I I must say after UHB three, that is in the batch seven, these terms were uh, a bit clear like how to observe this uh, expectations, thoughts, and desire outside uh, and inside. So uh, like uh, this, currently also. Uh, many times it happens, uh, thoughts are going on, though I am able to observe it, but uh, many occasions it happens, I am not able to distinguish the uh, between these desires and expectations all of sudden. But it happens many times also that I can observe. Uh, and many occasions, like if something is not going right uh, or something is not harmonious within, then suddenly you know, this observation becomes active, that yes, what is the feeling within me? So, uh, then the step two comes, like, is the feeling uh, naturally acceptable to me? So, I was asking this to myself when I'm not comfortable earlier. But slowly, uh, over the time, I can see even uh, like somebody is praising me, so am I getting you know uh, overjoyed or excited? That is also I am able to see. So whether it is like uh, I am in a down state or I am in up state, I am able to observe that. That means feeling is which is naturally acceptable or which is not naturally acceptable. But the state when I am stable within or I am harmonious within. I'm very much in ease, but however, whether I'm overjoyed or whether I'm not comfortable with it, that is not naturally acceptable to me. That was very clear. So uh, then uh, the step three comes like, are you in harmony? So uh, happy with the feeling that you have at this moment. So this particular, you know, I can see many times clearly like, yes, uh, I'm not happy at this moment or I'm not uh, comfortable at this moment, I'm, I'm a bit excited or I'm a bit down. So those things uh, happens. So uh, when I asked this particular question to me that what is the feeling? So that suddenly it gives, uh, it gives that uh, who is deciding this feeling? Is it me or is it the outside situation? So what are the, the feelings? I am responsible for this feeling or somebody else or the outside situation is responsible for this feeling within me. So that is the step four, which is, I should say, this uh, eye-opener step or uh, I should say, a very important step in my life. So when this step four uh, started in the very fast wedge, even till this 10th wedge, so it gives uh, the confidence within that yes i am who decides the feeling within me so if i am deciding the feeling which is not naturally acceptable to me then i am the only person who can change the feeling or who can uh, have the feeling which is naturally acceptable to me so uh, then uh, when we did this work steps slowly we may see that why I am not why I am not feeling comfortable or why this you know thought came or why this kind of feeling I am having right now. So I may see that step five comes naturally that my uh, thoughts are not on the basis of or my feelings are not in the basis of understanding or uh, it is on the basis of assumptions. So for example, I may say like, as uh, I was saying that I was the only son of my family, so I was not very good at you know, household works. So when I, we started 
as a family after marriage so it was kind of a male dominated family like i was expecting my wife should do this and my wife should do that uh, you know i am a male how can i do this there so many things uh, were happening and like you know father in law mother in law so uh, they are in laws so how can i um, behave like this like yeah, means in my family i need to be like this i need to be like that and uh, like in the college so uh, sometimes i i used to be a student of the same college when i am working so i was i am a student as well as i am a uh, colleague here so uh, i should do this i should not do this so so many assumptions means going on so uh, so in many uh, all these assumptions leading to a particular kind of uh, behavior outside so who is deciding uh, all these within me so this is me again i am coming to step four and when i say that all these imaginations all these you know feelings all these thoughts is it on the basis of you know uh, understanding or on the basis of assumption so i found many are on the basis of assumption and also many are on the basis of understanding so at this particular step 4 and 5 is the game changer i should say or i opener who uh, constantly uh, motivates me to work towards the right understanding now i'm coming to step 6 which feelings are naturally acceptable to me so actually uh, when we were doing that 7 usb 3 in that 7 the clarity regarding harmony and coexistence relationship with uh, kem like uh, in fact we when we started volunteering in the uhb programs various platforms like online offline we got exposed to so many people so everywhere these feelings were uh, very much uh, prominent like we are working with so many people who, to whom we have not seen many times like uh so uh, till now i have not met sunil bhai gopal bhai though we have worked uh, for long time uh, but how can we feel so related so i can see this feeling of relationship with uh, not only the human being but also uh, like rest of the units whether it is uh physical Order, or whether it is bio order, or whether it is this uh, animal order, or the human human order. But if I will see whether I can see it uh, in continuity, no, it comes sometimes. Like human being, yes, we are dealing with the human being most of the time, so it's possible to see. And but with rest of the order, sometimes I may not see it in continuity. And even the human being. Uh, sometimes it happens that yes i can see the relationship but sometime when i am you know, stuck i am not able to do this step one clearly then it happens that you know, i am in opposition so again the step 2 3 4 it comes and it goes on but uh, one thing i must say that the stage earlier like i was reacting i was very much angry like uh, if somebody is saying something to me i was reacting but if i will see today so if any words are coming who is giving meaning to it and how these words are uh, assimilated within me then whether it is on the basis of assumption or understanding so what will be my role in that so all these thing comes spontaneously and uh, accordingly the behavior outside uh, gets reflected and the main uh, step for that i should say this three terms like harmony relationship and coexistence so uh, but i should say that i am not uh, uh, very uh, consistent in the step so feeling of relationship is there harmony is there coexistence is there but if i will say in continuity then it's not it yet to be work open now uh, like 7a ensuring the feeling that you have at this moment in line of this relationship harmony existence so that i said uh, 
that yes, I can understand in logic it is fine, but when in living it it is there, but it is not in continuity. So, uh, like sometime I was uh, sleeping from all these uh, steps, or sometimes I'm getting uh, disharmony within, but uh, due to the steps of this uh, one to seven, I get back quickly, and sometimes the reactions earlier the reactions were happening outside. Then slowly reactions uh, reduced and reaction was happening inside. Though uh, reactions were not expressed outside, but it was happening inside. That means I was uh, not very clear about what is the imagination going on within me. But slowly over the time, if I will say right uh, currently, that is very much uh, resolved by measure yet step one and i say step one is the uh, state where uh, we that means i want to be and uh, this is a pure state of pure observer where we can uh, consistently work open and uh, we can be at ease so with this we may switch to uh, exercise two so where <clears throat> in the exercise two uh, we see that uh, the interaction with the body. So when this particular proposal was being uh, discussed that human being is a coexistence of self and body and being a student of science, so it was very difficult to accept, yes, how, you know, the human being can be self and body. So, uh, you know, we are, we are body and the brain is doing everything. But slowly when I observed in my living that yeah many things are happening and in every happening in the body that is my consent is there. So the brain is there, but who is instructing the brain? Why I am uh, means killing that mosquito sometime, I am not killing the mosquito sometime. Why I am not uh, responding to two inputs coming to me, but in the not in the same way to which I am uh, interested, I am uh, expressing with those sensation coming to me or input coming to me, but I'm not expressing to those. So many uh, examples, many living experiences are there where I can uh, observe that I'm not just a body. Definitely, uh, I am there. So I am very much there who is using this body as an instrument. So I am there, I exist, and the body is also there. And uh, sometime, you know, in, during this exercise, when we try to see that uh, whether the body is there or not. So when we close our eyes, we do not see uh, our body. And uh, it's uh, very difficult to see that, yes, the body is there. So it was a very, I mean, uh, funny kind of thing came when we, uh, we were doing this exercise that we have never observed the body uh, in our lifetime also, like uh, these things are there, these things are coming from uh, this part of the body and I am giving the meaning of, of it. So this is very interesting so, uh, uh, when I did this exercise too. So I transit information with the body from time to time as and when required. So that I can see very clearly, yes, when uh, many sounds are coming to me, but I put uh, my attention to that particular sound. For example, I was uh, sharing earlier also, like, uh, say I am at home, so my daughter is saying something, I am engaged in uh, some of the activities, so I don't listen to uh, her. But at the same time, when uh, I, I just, um, uh, I'm just going to picking her up, so at that time, even her small voice can, you know, I can reach. So when I put attention, I can uh, listen or I can uh, get that information. But when I don't pay attention, I cannot, I may not uh, get that uh, sound or the sensation. Now, uh, again, like step four in exercise uh, one. So it comes, who decides uh, the meaning to this uh, sensation. So like I, 
who decide the feeling or who uh, decides to uh, make the meaning out of the sensation or what instruction I should read and what in instructions, what sensations I will read and what instruction I will give. So while reading the sensation, uh, I can see I am not in session. I am not in sensation, but I can read the sensation uh, as and when required. And I give instruction to the body to act uh, accordingly, which is desirable uh, at that moment of time, looking at this uh, outside situation. So my interaction with the body and the world outside is uh, by the way of sensation. Of course, I read the sensation with my choice, but the meaning I give that depends on the kind of sanskar I am having. So, for example, I was just giving and these examples are being discussed several times. Like the same thing is being told by my father and the same thing is told by my father-in-law because we are staying in the same house. So, the meaning gets uh, altered earlier. But slowly over the time when we started exercising, uh, we can see that the other is just similar to me and uh, uh, like the feeling of relationship towards every human being. So that these things were uh, getting resolved. And uh, many uh, sanskar like, you know, I, I talk very fast. Sometimes I do not listen completely. I start speaking, assuming before understanding. And uh, like, you know, many times evaluating on the basis of body, so those strong sanskars are there, which needs you know little time to work upon, and I have been working on that. And I think I can, uh, uh, I, I I will be able to uh, work on those very strongly. So uh, whether I will uh, react or respond based on the sensation, that also depends on me. Earlier it was a reaction, but slowly over the time, I can see this uh, reaction turn into respond. So earlier, like uh, anything, like uh, father used to ask same thing again and again due to old days, but you know, I was reacting many times, but slowly now it is, I can see, yes, no, I mean, he is forgetting. So yes, uh, I need to uh, see that he's not able to remember. So I need to respond. Similarly, like um, my spouse or child or somebody in the uh, university or institute. So those things are getting better slowly. And when I come to a step seven, that I am in coexistence uh, in space and body is also coexistence in space. So uh, particularly looking at the space, I'm not, uh, I should say very clear on that, but yes, of course the feeling of being in the space as a human being, as a coexistence of self and body with the rest of the cells, with the rest of the nature. So it uh, gives an immense uh, pleasure within that we say talk of happiness, you know, uh, satisfaction, bliss, super bliss state. So somewhere with the feeling of relationship with everyone and with the feeling of coexistence. So it gives immense pleasure within which uh, sometimes I feel like uh, I'm in a state of uh, very calm and uh, very harmonious with it. So with this, uh, I can say I have uh, completed exercise one and two. So if we we'll say the next part of the thing that which of the steps I am able to see and which are uh, not, then I should say uh, in exercise one, step one is the uh, step which uh, I need to do all the time, though I'm not very consistent on that. Sometimes I sleep from that step, but uh, that step uh, I need to work open. Then if I will see uh, step two to five, so that is happening majority of the time. So it happens sequentially. Sometimes it happens uh, that particular step four, uh, I should say exercise one. It, it happens many times. I asked who is harboring this feeling within me and why it is coming. So four or five particularly. 
and six and seven if i will say that is a lifelong work which i am working and i am uh, i am committed to work upon it throughout my rest of this bodily journey even beyond that and uh, if i will say come to exercise two then step one i uh, let the coexistence of self and body there is no doubt in it but where looking directly then i should say i need to work open and uh, two to five yes i am able to work open that reading sensation giving meaning to it and giving meaning to it and all this i can able to do and uh, if i will say particularly step six like i said many sanskars are there which i need to work upon so i am working on that and i think i will be working more sincerely on that and step seven of exercise two still you know i am exploring and uh, i think that is we need more exploration on that over the time and uh, it will say uh, that the happiness in it nature so yes it was the first question of this morning sessions that uh, yes happiness is something innate uh, within us it is not the outside uh, uh, something outside uh, some effect of outside so uh, it was a brainstorming kind of thing when i did this exercise for the first time but uh, over the time, yes, I can see it logically, but if you are saying continuity, sometimes it happens, I am getting affected from the outside as well. So, and it happens majorly with the you know, close family members, not uh, people around me, but slowly it is also getting reduced. Now, uh, we have discussed on this, like uh, it is on the basis of reconditioning or sensation. And so, yes, many times it is happening in some conditioning or sensation. Uh, but of course, I'm so thankful to this coexistence that I am able to identify this natural acceptance within me, which is guiding me all the time to come into the track again and again. So uh, with this, I may conclude this exercise one and two in all these steps. And if I will come to the commitment part, so uh, usually I divert uh, two to three hours in a day for this uh, developing right understanding and feeling within. In fact, if I will say this particular feelings, so every moment, uh, whether I am at ease, whether I am excited, whether I am uh, feeling low, the feeling part is now getting very clear uh, to me. Yes, this is happening within me. And uh, if I will say how much time you can devote for social responsibility. So, uh, yes, whatever time is uh, left out after the, the minimum responsibility in my recent family, the rest of the time is for the social responsibility only. And uh, this social responsibility, in fact, the responsibility of myself, that when uh, I am engaged with the rest of the nature, rest of the people, in fact, my understanding getting clear and uh, I am more in a relationship I am having clarity towards this harmony relationship and coexistence in better and better. So uh, I must uh, express my gratitude to all the mentors, starting from Ganesh, Samya Vidhi, Kumar Bhaiya, Ganesh Bhaiya, Gopal Bhaiya, and all uh, like Sunil Bhaiya, it means everyone with whom I have come across, even many people I have not uh, made them not come across but uh, because the virtue of this coexistence i am here and i am blessed to be the part of this uh UHB journey so thank you uh, namaste namaste to you namaste so very nice detailed and honest sharing from here and the way he has described all the steps uh, with his life day-to-day -day life it is very commendable and he is very dedicated towards this eventual content and activities in the morning I always found here and logged in before me. So it is very good. But uh, 
regarding shin i want to say a few points uh, we have looked through this content from last many uh, session from last many batches so when we listen this content uh, repeatedly so we start evaluating our sanskars knowingly some sanskars we evaluate knowingly and some sanskars we stop evaluating unknowingly and consciously so both are happening uh, in bhaiya sometimes he is able to evaluate this sanskar knowingly and many times he is evaluating this sanskar unknowingly and the important is that we have started evaluating us sanskars and whenever we uh, start evaluating our sanskar our, our ability to receive the content become more so with evaluation of our sanskar the ability to grasp the content increases and this is happening in tarapasana bhaiya that we put very nicely so keep it bhaiya you are already working a lot you are already trying to observe the information sanskar and you are accepting where you are able to see where you are not able to see and this is what we have we all have to share honestly that which steps we are able to see which steps we are not able to see where we are able to see logically where we are able to see experientially this differences should be clear in all of us that tara prasanna bhaiya has shared so nice bhaiya keep it keep it up and i have also learned from you sir yes sir no way you all the mentors and we are listening to you the many things that are uh, coming from all of you only the yes sir thank you bhaiya keep practicing thank you gobal bhaiya uh kumar bhaiya namaste over to you namaste bhaiya namaste everyone nice tara bhaiya very well shared your observation at every step and overall i can see for you that you have been a very sincere humble uh, persevering student of uh, uh, i'll say uhv so you have been since the time you attended the first workshop you have been working very hard to and sure right understanding within you and participate in the programs also whatever you feel you should be doing you do it very consistently and we have never found you reacting in any situation so long love as far as we have been interacting with you and we have been seeing how you have been also contributing in whatever manner you can so very nice bhaiya my best wishes to you thank you bhaiya namaste and uh, my sincere gratitude to you bhaiya <laughs> meeting you at kanpur was a uh, like dream come true <laughs> and uh, you know uh, i always see you ganesh sir sharma uh, ji and all mentors in a like uh, in a separate place in my life bhaiya ji <laughs> who actually turns viral for me brought from this darkness to this lightness of you know <laughs> self exploration ji bhai thank you so much nice bhaiya thank you kumar bhaiya uh, shamla ji namaste over to for the comments ji namaste namaste sabhi ko namaste tara prasanna ji ji <laughs> ji namaste Namaste. It was very nice to hear your detailed sharing. Gopal ji and Kumar ji have already mentioned many things about you. I think I I was very pleased to hear your um, sharing. When I compare to all previous sharings, I think so far this one was the best one that I can say from the previous ones. Probably because your observations are getting sharper. um having said that i also have to mention that right from the very first time 
ever since uh, I have been working with you or in touch with uh, your work, it has come across very clearly about your sincerity and your honesty in working your commitment uh, with the UHV programs. And um, your sense of feeling of relationship for the other that comes across. Tara Prasannaji is very much a people person and he has, you know, like Kumar Bia and others Gopalji was sharing. I don't think that I have ever seen him getting, you know, very upset or not being able to manage any situation. He is always ready to help anybody and everybody who has any query. And I think when we, for many of you, you must have seen when you respond when you ask him a query or question, he responds very quickly. At least I have observed that he responds very fast, whatever it may be, whether he will look into it or whatever it is, the response comes very quickly. So you always know that there is somebody that you can, you know, somebody who is reliable, who can, you know, work in the situation in, you know, as a team member very very effective so with all of this you know all the very best for your further exploration your journey and your um, work in all the projects we all heard about all the projects that uh, taraji has been working on and uh, there are many many such projects he's one of the very valuable members of the team so all the best to you for the further journey also. My sincere gratitude to you, Rajul sir, and the entire family of you and the entire family of UHV, and those who have been putting constant motivation for all of us to go ahead, go ahead and go ahead. Thank you so much.